guys and welcome to Escape with Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're looking at the new Pagani Design PD1676 which is an homage to the Paul Newman Rolex Daytona. So this watch was released just a couple weeks ago. I was the first to unbox it. I'll leave the unboxing up here if you're into that and I believe I'm the first to give this a full review. So uh, I just want to say a huge thank you goes out to the Pagani Design AliExpress official store. I'll be leaving their link down below. They sent this watch to me for free. I do not have to send it back, uh, but you'll see shortly that that won't have any effect on my actual review of this thing. It's going to be 100% honest. So, um, retail price for this watch is $115. You can pay an extra $10 to get the bigger, fancier box. The watch is offered in two different colorways. You have this white panda dial here, and you also have the black and white uh, reverse evil panda. And both of them are sold with the ceramic bezel inserts and I believe they are considering doing steel inserts. So uh, maybe keep an eye out on that, ask the store, uh, and see what they say. At the time of this recording, the sale price is under $90 for this, and for that you're getting a full 316L stainless steel case, sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, screw down crowns, all three of those, screw down case back, a solid stainless steel bracelet, 100 meters of water resistance, and a Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz movement. So it's a heck of a package, but it can't be perfect, right? Let's dig in. Uh, before we do the dig in, uh, I've been asked a few times now, do a wrist check. Today, I'm wearing the Kronos Pepsi GMT. Go check out the review of that. I'll be leaving that up in this corner. Really like this watch. Anyway, let's get back to the review. All right, dimensions. So this is listed as a 39 millimeter case, and that's that's just about what I'm getting. It's kind of hard to measure this one, but 39.1 ish. Um, bezel is 38 and a half, just to give you an idea. Case height 13 millimeters flat. We have 20 millimeter lug width, and the overall lug to lug is 47.4 millimeters. So it's a great size. I uh, absolutely love the size of this thing, and I was surprised that they actually made a new case for this watch. Um, so the 1644, I believe, has a very similar case with these similar turned down lugs here. And uh, yeah, I was surprised that they actually slimmed that down. That one's an actual 40 millimeter case, so this one's even smaller, uh, definitely thinner in the lug areas here, and you got brushed lugs there. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the case profile on this thing looks, looks really, really good. Very interesting, I think. Um, just something a little bit different. But I do really like the way that it wears, so I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on the wrist for you. Here it is on my 7.5 inch wrist, and you can see, I mean, the, the dimensions on it are just perfect. Um, yeah, really happy with the way it wears. You got nice curvature down on the, the lugs there, so it hugs the wrist nicely. It does sit up a little bit high, but really, really not too bad. Um, you know, lots of uh, shine off that bracelet and the ceramic bezel, and yeah, it does look uh, looks pretty good. I think. What do you guys think? Get it in some sunlight here, and here you can see even in direct sunlight, it doesn't really get washed out. The the crystals, they say it has AR on it, um, inner reflective coating, and I, I think it does. It, it looks really good. It's been cutting down on reflections pretty nicely since I've had it. Uh, very happy with it. So I'm going to go throw this on some other straps, and we will get back to the review. And here it is on my Barton Silicon Elite. Probably my most worn strap out of anything. Super comfortable. Looks really, really good. I had no doubts that just a plain black strap is going to look good on this thing. So, yeah, there it is. Looks really, really good. And here it is on a dark brown vintage leather strap. You can see this is from my octopus. But, uh, yeah, I think the, the color combination, I think, works really good. It's got that vintage look to it. So, really brings out the details, in my opinion. And it looks really good. Very comfortable as well. Hugs it right down to the wrist. This case shape is, is actually really, really nice. And here we are on a Marine National style strap, black with the white stripe. I think it looks pretty good with the uh, the white dial. And, you know, the, the white dial is controversial, I know, but, uh, yeah, I think it makes it more of a strap monster. So just keep that in mind. If you have a cream dial, only certain straps really go well with it. So with the white dial, you can pretty much throw anything on it, and it's going to look good. So, yeah, I do really like it. Still, even with one layer of uh, nylon under it, you can still see that it, it wears really, really good. Um, extremely comfortable 
yeah, I do I do really like it. What do you guys think? And lastly, here we are on a seatbelt nail strap. And, yeah, you know, two layers underneath the watch. It still hugs the wrist really well. Again, super comfortable. Uh, yeah, this thing's kind of a strap monster. I love it. What do you guys think? Let's get back to the review, though. So let's talk about the case finishing. So the case finishing on this is really nicely done, I think. Uh, Pagani is usually usually does a pretty good job of uh, you know polishing and brushing and stuff like that. So not a not a real surprise here. It does have a vertical brushing on the top of the lugs here, as you can see. Pretty decent sharp transition. It's maybe just a little soft, but nothing you really notice when it's on the wrist. Um, down to polished sides, polished crown guards, signed crown, as you can see there. Um, the pushers on this thing also signed or not signed but the pushers on this are also screw down pushers here uh pretty decent feedback better than their their 1644 their normal daytona homages that they sell um yeah i think the the feedback on the screwing action is a little bit better uh, and we'll talk about the actual feedback of them when we get to the movement part um as you can see nice little detail here on the pusher crowns you do have these two little little ridges there um, not sure why they did that uh, but it does look really good and it gives a little bit more detail a little more uh, interest to the case and I think they did a good job uh, the other side again fully polished it's kind of a, a rounded case shape it's not straight sided so you do get some really nice reflections off of it and it's hard to find any faults with it with it when the uh, the case looks like this so uh, I really do like it you can see I already picked up a scratch there but that happens um, but yeah, you do have this really interesting kind of turned down look to it. The bottom of the case back, as you can see, it's circular brushed. The case back itself is fully polished and has this pretty cool uh, race car design on it. Uh, this is a racing inspired chronograph and yeah, it does look pretty cool. I think I like that Pagani is starting to put some effort into the case backs. Um, it's not something I personally care about, but it's, it is nice to see that they're doing something different. Uh, this and the Moonwatch. Uh, speedy homage you know they both had really cool case backs so getting back to the front of the watch here let's talk about this bezel here so we have a ceramic bezel insert all the markings are done pretty nicely i, I see no uh you know paint spillover or anything like that it's not loomed and i didn't really expect it to be loomed i uh, just thought i would mention it but yeah it's done really nicely i don't see any errors in the printing uh, i'm not a tachymeter bezel expert so maybe there is an error somewhere but i, I don't see it um but yeah, it is done really nicely. And as you can see, it is set into a steel bezel uh, that's press fitted onto the case. And, uh, just a polished surface there. Pretty nicely done. Uh, very interesting. It does sit maybe just a little tall. It looks, I don't know, it, it just looks a little awkward. Uh, it doesn't look bad. It just looks a little awkward. That's all. Uh, but it is, it is nicely done. the crystal on this thing it is absolutely gorgeous uh, they say that it is anti-reflective coated and i tend to believe that um, it, it really does cut down on reflections and uh, it's got no blue tint to it or anything like that it just looks gorgeous it looks really really good you can see it sits above the bezel there nice curve on the edge here and then pretty flat here so it, it does give very little distortion as you can see um, yeah i mean it, it looks great i've got zero complaints i've had Pagani crystals in the past that are just horrible. Um, for instance, the, the Speedmaster one is just god awful. The uh, the Black Bay is pretty bad as well. Uh, this one is excellent. Uh, very happy with the crystal on this one. So let's talk about the dial on this thing. So we have a gloss white dial. I don't know if I can show it to you or not, but it is glossy white dial, matte black subdials. You can see they got the concentric circles there, the white paint in the inside. I think it looks really, really good. They did a nice job, very clean design. And yeah, I, I do really, really like it. You have the Pagani Design chronograph and the logo at the 12 o'clock position. Uh, you don't see the sport text down here above the six o'clock subdial. I know the, the renders have that on there, but this one does not have it. But the funny thing is, if you, I'm gonna see if I can show it to you. If you look, man, I don't know if it's showing up or not. But if you look in certain lighting, you can actually see the sport text kind of underneath the white paint. It's really hard to see in general. Uh, it's probably impossible to show on the camera. But um, yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny. They had it there at one point and they covered it up. And I, I think they, they made the right choice personally. 
Now, this is a pure white dial. Here is my Alpha Paul Newman, and you can see it's clearly cream. Um, you got to get certain straps to work with this color, and uh, with the the white dial, you don't. This thing is kind of a strap monster. I've thrown a bunch of straps on it, and they all look good. Some of them wouldn't look good on that that Alpha. So uh, it's kind of a trade off. I do like the white dial. The handset on this, as you can see, uh, really nicely sized. They go all the way out to the minute track there. The hands themselves are kind of a black polished, so you get really nice contrast with the white background. And yeah, I mean, they look great. I have no problem reading it. Um, I do wish the subdial hands were white. They are just a polished silver handset. Um, yeah, I, I don't mind that they're silver, but I would have preferred white hands. Uh, minute track around the outside, again, very hard to read uh, just because it's that darker, darker red color on the black. You do have applied indices at all the hour markers with little loom plots on them there. Uh, the loom on this is the Fotina, that vintage loom. Uh, it's not great, but it's a chronograph. You don't really expect it to be great. And chronograph and Pagani, uh, you don't expect it to be great at all. So, But I am going to put up a loom shot right now. And you can see it here against some of the other chronographs in my collection. Um, it's pretty much on par with everything except for the Alpha, which is actually surprisingly pretty good. So uh, just don't expect great loom and you'll be happy. So let's talk about the movement here. So the movement is operated by this three o'clock screw down crown. Really smooth screw in, screw out action. Uh, very happy with it. First position does have a ghost state position. Uh, I, I'm perfectly fine with them deleting that. I think it makes it look real nice and clean. So I'm happy that it's gone. Uh, second position is your time setting position. You know, pretty typical. Uh, I've got no problems with the Seiko VK63. It's an excellent movement. Very happy with it. I've, I've had it in quite a few watches now and Every one of them has been reliable, accurate, and uh, yeah, no problems with it. The chronograph function is operated by these two screw down crowns. The first one here will start the chronograph second hand. It sweeps along at, I don't know what it is, four or five ticks per second. Fairly smooth, nice looking. You have decent feedback on the, the two crowns. Nice snapback action, um, solid feedback on that reset pusher. We'll talk about the subdials real quick. So at the three o'clock, you have a 24 hour subdial. Uh, you can see it's about 10 o'clock and the, uh, you know, you don't have a marker in between the 10 and the 12. Same thing with the nine o'clock subdial. So that is your chronograph counter. Uh, you don't have markings for every minute. So you're kind of guessing when you're in between the five minute markers. And that's kind of what I see on a lot of um, Daytona homages. I think the speedies mostly get it right. Uh, but the, the Daytona homages don't. Um, yeah, they're a little bit hard to get accurate time readings. And that's kind of a big deal, I guess. Um, six o'clock subdial is just your typical running second hand. No big deal. But yeah, the movement, uh, I'm very happy with it. Um, I've got no problems with the action of the crowns or anything like that. So really happy they're using this movement. Let's talk about the bracelet. Uh, this is your typical Pagani design bracelet, three link oyster style. You got polished center links, brushed outer links. Uh, finishing, I think, is done pretty good. You can see there is a little bit of uh, I don't know, spillover there. I, I, I'm just seeing this now, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, that's probably just a quality control issue. You shouldn't see that on any other ones. Uh, end link fitment, uh, very solid. Very solid end link fitment, no wiggle or anything like that. It does follow the curvature of the case nicely. The brushing matches nicely. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the finishing on it. Um, center links, you know, they have their typical pits and valleys that you see on, uh, you know, cheaper homages in their polishing. Uh, it's expected. Um, it's not great. You do have solid end links, solid links, and screw pins for adjusting. I had to remove three links for my seven and a half inch wrist and you got two extra plus some micro adjust so you should be able to get a pretty good fitment on this thing the clasp is your typical pagani clasp get the fold over and then uh yeah brushed on the outside polished on the inside again polished on the sides you do have some sharp edges here uh it's something i've complained about in the past and i'm going to keep on complaining about it because it it does scratch things i scratched myself earlier i scratch my kids when i pick them up uh, yeah, they need to really, they, they really just need to redesign the bracelet in general. Um, yeah, you know, pretty decent action, uh, nice, easy to open here. It's polished and kind of a satin brush on the inside. Um, 
yeah, this one actually works fairly good. Uh, it does have a sweaty day extension here, which is nice to see, and it is working. The inside of the clasp here, you can see the micro adjustment holes there. You just have to pop this extension out, and then you can get your uh, tool in there to, to adjust it. Uh, kind of a pain in the butt, but it is what I expect. Um, yeah, the bracelet is, it's just not my favorite. This one, this one especially is very cheap sounding. It doesn't feel cheap when it's on the wrist. It feels fine. Uh, it's actually pretty comfortable and I, I really don't have much of a problem with it, except when I'm going to put it on, just listen to this. It's not, I think a lot of that is this first link. You get lots and lots of play on that first link. And this is a problem with pretty much all of this, uh, these Pagani style oyster bracelets. Um, they really, they need to just redo these. Um, personally, I think this thing would look awesome on one of their rivet style bracelets with their new double pusher clasp. Um, I think it would look great. Uh, I would love to see them redo this. Maybe female end link would be even better. Um, yeah, as, as it is though, the bracelet is, it's not, it's definitely not the highlight of the watch. Um, probably the low point of the watch, but it's not a horrible bracelet. It's just not a, not a good bracelet at all. Um, so there you go, guys. That is the new Paul Newman Daytona from Pagani Design, the PD1676. It is a, I think, a great deal at $90. Uh, definitely something different than the more modern day homages and yeah the crystal I think is just great the the case itself is excellent I have got no problems with it uh, throw this thing on a strap and you're gonna be super happy with it uh, maybe you'll like the bracelet maybe you'll get one that's a little bit better I don't know so if you guys are interested in this again I'll be leaving an affiliate link down below that affiliate link it doesn't cost you any extra it just gives the channel a little bit of commission with anything you purchase during that visit uh, so if you guys do use it, not just to buy this watch, but to buy anything on AliExpress, uh, thank you guys so much. Um, I, I really appreciate it. Loving this. Uh, love doing these reviews for you guys. And the fact that you guys are using my links and, you know, watching my videos, it means that I'm going to get more of these watches in. And we'll be doing some uh, giveaways on these things. And, uh, yeah, we'll have lots of fun with them. So thank you guys again for all the support. If you guys want to see some more pictures of this, I will be leaving my Instagram account down below. If you guys have any questions or comments on this watch, uh, please drop them down below. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like it? Do you don't like it? What would you change? Um, would you add a cream dial option to it? Maybe, maybe they'll do it. Um, yeah, leave those comments down below. I love chatting with you guys. Uh, I think that's about it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.